So I know that circles can be very confusing trying to manage the angles and all the arcs and they overlap and they do different things and the vertex is on the circle, in the circle, outside of the circle, but just be calm, relax, take a deep breath and believe that you can learn this. I know that you can. All right, let's take a look at this problem here. Welcome to another edition of Circles. Today we're looking at inscribed angles on this example, and I've drawn this diagram down here because it's going to make sense to help us understanding this big diagram. Right here, what we eventually have to find is the measure of this arc. And you can't just look at one angle right away and know what it is. You have to do a little work. But before you can get to that, we have to remember that we are using inscribed inscribed that's an R inscribed angles here and inscribed angles look like this what makes it an inscribed angle what makes it an inscribed angle is where is the vertex where is the vertex well the vertex is right here it is on on the circle when the vertex is on the circle not in the center not outside like this, but on the circle, then the angle, the angle is the arc over two. Huh, okay, well, it's like this. Let's say that this angle in here, and this is gonna make sense for our example up there, I promise you. Let's say that this angle, this angle, is 50 degrees. If this angle is 50 degrees, then my arc out here has to be what? If my angle is 50 and my arc is arc over 2, I multiply both sides by 2 to get my arc, this is going to be 100. Vertex is on the circle. The arc that that angle intercepts is going to be twice as big. So let's say my arc out here, let's say my arc out here is 80 degrees. What would my angle be? 80? Well, it'd be half of that. It'd be 40 degrees in here. Well, let's say that I don't have the arc. Instead, I have the angle like when we first started at 21 degrees. What would my arc out here be? It'd be twice that, right? It'd be 40 two degrees so you can go either way you if you have your arc you can get your angle if you have your angle you can get your arc. over here all of our vertices on the circle that's on the circle that's on the circle that's on the circle that's on the circle all of our vertices are on the circle our vertices are on the circle over here so we're dealing with nothing but inscribed angles where the angle is going to be half the arc and the arc is going to be double the angle okay how about 50 degrees? We're ultimately wanting to figure out what this arc length is here. The measure of this arc, not the length, but the measure of this arc. Let's keep in mind that the opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary. These opposite angles will always add to 180. Because of that, we can solve the inside angles of this quadrilateral first, and that'll be key to us solving this problem. 119, this angle, let's call it angle A, then we can solve for angle X very easily. And since we have this angle at 65, we can solve for angle Y very easily. Once we have these angle measures, we can worry about our arcs next. X plus 119 degrees must equal 180 degrees because opposite angles are supplementary. Let's subtract 119 from both sides. Positive 119 and negative 119 are zero, so just have x equals 180 minus 119 leaves us with 61 degrees. So angle x is 61 degrees. And now we can solve for angle Y because 65 degrees plus angle Y must be 180 because those are 65 degrees plus Y degrees equals 180 degrees. We're solving for this. They're opposite angles. 
I'm going to subtract 65 from both sides. Positive 65 and negative 65 are 0. There's no reason to write 0 plus y. But my calculator, 180 minus 65 is 150. Y equals 115 degrees. I can take my y out and put in 115. So I have 115 degrees. Now I'm going to erase this to give us some. Look at this thing. Uh huh. This is the only value for the measure of an arc that I've got. This is 168 degrees. So the intercepting angle, which would be this guy, right? This guy is the only thing that has that as part of its arc. If this is 115, then this whole arc right here, from here all the way around to there, this whole thing right here would be double 115. It would be 115 times 2. 115 and 115 is 230. So this whole piece out here is 230 degrees. If I take 230 for this whole piece from here all the way to here, that's 230 right and I say well 168 of it's here I can solve for that little piece I can solve for that little piece 230 for all of the blue minus 168 for just the yellow Let's see 230 minus 1630 minus 168 gives me 62 degrees okay so 62 degrees that means this little piece right here is 62 degrees this little guy here sixty two degrees okay so this piece right here is sixty two degrees now let me erase all that so let's back up now that we've solved that one arc for sixty two degrees we're gonna back all the way up to here and I'm gonna write that sixty two degrees back right here where we know where it is that's this piece right here is 62 degrees. Now I have an angle that intercepts this whole thing. I'm going to make it blue. I have this angle that has a vertex on the circle. And it intercepts this whole arc right here. It intercepts this whole arc. So if this angle in here, the inscribed angle is 61, this whole arc out here has to be double that. 61 plus 61 is 122, right? 61 and 61 is 122 degrees. That's this whole blue. Now we just want the red piece. And so now it becomes very easy for us to solve. If the entire arc is 122 degrees, and this blue piece here is 62 degrees of it, we can subtract the 62 from the total to give us what's left over. 122 minus 62 equals 60 degrees. So our answer here is... 60 degrees, 60 degrees. If you have any questions, send me a remind message or email. Be glad to help you further.